Sherry Nigam. She's the publisher of all SAE books. She has a really great presentation for us today. She's going to walk through everything that's new with SAE books. Uh, so go ahead, Sherry. Hi, everybody. I'm Sherry Nigam. I, I'm the publisher of SAE books. That means that um, anything and everything that comes through as original content in the form of a book usually goes through my department. Um, bear with me. I hate reading slides, but this one I have to read so I get our mission statement right, and then I'll break it down for you. Um, the SAE International Books Program selects mobility engineering leaders as authors to present solutions, share knowledge to keep our audience up to date on information in critical areas of technology including autonomous, unmanned, cybersecurity, connectivity. There are a wide variety of book formats for every type of learner. I came to SAE Books with about 25 years of publishing experience. Um, and the one thing that drew me in is the fact that as the publisher at an organization, you have access to all the experts. When you're at a publishing company that does not have an affiliation with a society or some sort of professional um, relationship, you are out there constantly trying to find out who the movers and the shakers are, who our leaders are, um, who's the next big person, what's going on. And by being at SAE, I have contacts. Um, I know what's going on. If I don't, I can pick up the phone and call someone. Um, normally, I would say in the next office, but in the next you know, house down the road to find out who I should be talking to. So having that unprecedented access to the leaders is something that's a huge advantage, um, not only for SAE, but for our readers. We do um, discuss the fact that SAE provides you not only journals, papers, research reports. Um, we try to provide materials for you in every format that you can imagine, because different formats are important for different reasons. For books, um, it's it's about information that lasts a long time. So, you know, we do do cutting edge information. But we also have some core titles that are fundamentals. Um, we have some historical titles. We have case studies. Um, they meet the needs of students and researchers in the way that papers usually don't. Although when you go through an SAE book, you'll see that much of the content um, starts with the paper and then builds upon from there. So we're also working really hard to do new textbooks that align with where the company as a whole is going. Um, where, where's the industry going? Where's mobility going? And are we going to follow along? Uh, and I'm pleased to say the answer is yes. So for next year, um, one of our big books, our core books, will be Fundamentals of Automated and Connected Vehicles um, by Dr. Jeffrey Wishart of Arizona State. That will be a core textbook. Um, we will be piloting that textbook in the fall with courses to see how it goes and then um, and hopefully get more adoptions and really fine tune what the student and the instructors want. Uh, the other big books we have coming out next year in terms of where mobility is going is we have a new book on vehicle dynamics by Dan Williams, who is the absolute leader in the industry on this. Um, Dan, you know, brings a new perspective because our current vehicle dynamics book was published in 1990. So, um, you know, we're really excited to have Dan on board with this. The new book I just signed last week, um, and I want to get the title right, Advances in Artificial Intelligence Vehicles in Vehicle Engineering. So, uh, Artificial Intelligence in Vehicle Engineering. So, we're constantly looking at where the company as a whole, um, where our members are driving us, what committees we're doing, so that we can always be in alignment with the rest of the organization. So SAE Books launched in 1989. We have over 500 books with original content. And currently we offer a curated ebook collection that contains about 300 books. Um, the question I get most often from subscribers to the ebook collection is, I see 500 books on Mobilis. Why don't I have access to all 500 books? Um, and the answer is, you know, when you go back from, to 1989, we don't have e-rights on all those books. Um, and there are some books that we just don't have files for anymore. They're just available in print. Um, everything from about 2010 forward is definitely ebook. We have the rights we can, and we do post it. But you will find if you go through some of the books listed under books, 
Um, those could be uh, special collections. They could be a special publication by a committee. Um, there are not true original content books. So what you're getting with your ebook collection is 25 or more new books every year of original content. So um, that's not going to be any sort of um, collaboration of journal papers. It's not going to be any collection of any kind. It's pure original content. And we're incredibly proud that we can provide that to our membership. So here, I just want to show you a list that we're going to go through of all these different titles. Um, I think it's important to take a look at the list as a whole from this viewpoint, because you can see as you go through here, um, you know, we're trying to provide content for every type of engineer out there. Um, so, you know, of course, we do automotive and, and aerospace. But what else are we trying to do out there? Um, we're going to get into where we talk about motor car enthusiasts. How are we reaching them? How are we reaching people in manufacturing? Um, again, what are we doing for textbooks? So as you see, as we'll go through that, we try to provide a wide selection of material for our customers. The first book, um, and you'll see as we go through, I try to highlight everyone's um, criteria or their credentials, because I think it's so important to understand that we do get the best of the best. Um, you know, Mark is an expert in aerospace, and this is the only book out there that discusses um, thermal heat management within an aircraft. And, you know, everything you do produces heat. And how do you manage that? And if you don't manage that, let's be honest, your airplane's probably going to melt. You don't want that. So, um, you know, if it was a live in person session, we'd have a lot of laughs. I'm assuming you're laughing. Um, so this is one of the books we want to get out there for a course. Um, again, we look at current courses when we plan these books. We try to make sure that we follow current curriculum. And then we try to challenge instructors by putting out um, more recent research and materials that they can go to. The second book um, we have on 1D and multi-D modeling. I think this is so important because, you know, modeling is critical for the scope of engineer development. Every vehicle is different. Um, every engine is different. And if you don't have that modeling in place, um, we don't know how things are going to function before we make them. One thing that I want to point out that goes very well with this book um, is Audit Joshi's book that we published last year, which is Hardware in the Loop Testing and Simulations. Um, this book goes into X in the Loop Testing just a little bit toward the end. But if you really want to learn more, then I would definitely go to um, uh, Joshi's book for more information on that. You'll see as we go through here, um, we use authors from all over the world. We think that is incredibly important to get a worldwide viewpoint of where the industry is going. And, you know, the best researchers are located all over the world. And the way, you know, we can collaborate today, we don't have to be in the same room. And you'll see that as we go through and look at our authors. This is one of my favorite books, um, not just because... Um, Angelo Mango is a priest, but I do love that about him. Um, he also takes a very um, strong look at project management and all the tools that are available for project management, but he puts it in a scope of how it applies to mobility engineering. So you can take the tools that are out there off the shelf and use them in your work. But what he's going to do is tell you how to customize those tools uh, specifically those by the Project Management Institute, and use them for V models, prototyping, spiral models, how to be agile. Um, this book is absolutely incredibly appropriate for a professional development course. Um, and I would highly recommend that for anybody who's getting into project management as a, as a first step of what tools you need. The next book is one of my favorite books um, of the year. It's McLaren, The Engine Company. McLaren came to me, um, gosh, about 18 months ago, saying that they wanted to give someone unprecedented access to their archives. And if they did that, what could we do with that? Um, and we had a lot of fun with that. That's what we did. It was a lot of work, but we had a lot of fun. So we looked in the archives and were able to tell a story about McLaren engines that nobody really understood or knew about. Um, for example, McLaren engines started in a garage. 
um, in Detroit. I mean, it was not any sort of huge manufacturing thing. It was literally in a garage in someone's backyard. So, you know, again, we have unprecedented access to not only the photographs, but the people in the photographs. Um, for anyone out there who's ever had to do permissions for artwork, let me tell you, when you were trying to track down people from a photograph from 1973 and trying to identify them to get their rights, um, when you do get a hold of them, you get some great stories. We were able to capture those and put those into the book. Um, the preface of the book is written by Johnny Rutherford, a uh, three-time Indianapolis 500 winner who was obviously driving a McLaren engine during that time. The next book is a bit of a departure from us in that the intended audience is not automotive engineers. We feel like at SAE, um, as the people who put forth the standards for autonomous vehicles, that we should really take a ownership of explaining what that means to the general public. Um, what is it going to look like in five years when autonomous vehicles are really on the road? How is that going to impact day to day life? Um, you know, Everyday citizens hear about it. Um, they don't get as excited as we do, um, but they need to understand what is going to happen and how that's going to make um, life so different for them um, in both positive ways and negative ways. And um, Joseph Hummer is the director of transportation of the state of North Carolina. And one of the things he does is he goes around the country and gives lectures to community groups on autonomous vehicles and what that's going to look like in the uh, next five to 10 years. So I highly recommend this book um, for anyone who wants to know more about the industry. The next group, um, you know, straight motion of road vehicles, we talked a lot about internally. Um, we do vehicle dynamic books, but we had not done a straight motion of road vehicles book. We weren't sure. Um, you know, we had to really evaluate, is there an audience for this? What's the, the value of the straight motion versus just a general vehicle dynamics book? Um, and Dr. Latuda really is on the cutting edge research, um, particularly of tires and how motion impacts those. So, you know, he came to us and, and provided an amazing access to research of what's going on. Um, in the area of straight ahead motion. And you know, all vehicles operate differently and you have to understand all the equations involved in order to project how those vehicles are gonna run. So again, another collaboration um, international with a couple of instructors from the University of Milan um, in mechanical design and then Dr. Latuda who is out of um, uh, Brimo. The next book is um, The Journal to Accompany the Road to the Top is now on the map. This is, you know, The Road to the Top came out last year. It is a uh, collection of interviews with the 36 most influential women in automotives. And this book took off in a way that none of us really imagined it would. We released it in October by the end of the year, it was the best-selling book, and we had gone back to reprint three times. So um, we had people come to us and say, we want to do a book club on this book. We want more information. What can we do? And so after a lot of conversations with customers, we developed just a very you know quick and easy journal that helps people read the book and then collaborate in a book club setting or with small groups. Um, the next book comes to us from two instructors out of the University of Wisconsin. Um, Andrea is actually the chair of the department there. This is uh, specifically written for a course. So, you know, we've taken into consideration course curriculum, um, syllabus, you know, what's important to learn in, you know, 12 weeks on automotive emissions. I think one thing is, is uh, kind of a fun story the authors provide me with feedback on what they want their covers to look like, specifically what kind of art they want. Um, is there anything special that I need to be aware of? Um, and John and Andrea came back and said, okay, we just want a red cover. You know, we're from the University of Wisconsin. We represent the Badgers. Just make it as red as possible. 
So we went through about four or five different covers till they found one that they felt represented their university quite well. And that was just a, um, it's an incredibly fun process for the authors to spend a year writing a book and then to come back and uh, do what we call the fun stuff, which is the, the cover and the marketing. The next book by Samuel Davis um, is an incredible book in terms of there is nothing else like it on the market that talks about managing the electric power throughout the vehicle. Um, you know, we talk about the engine, that's pretty standard, but we don't talk about how every single component of a vehicle impacts the power sources. And that's what uh, Sam does chapter by chapter. He goes through so that you understand how running the air conditioner operates or affects your power, um, you know, and how it affects your performance and the safety and just how we can make things better. Um, he is a designer. He's the editor in chief of Power Electronics. And this is absolutely his wheelhouse. Um, the next book, again, one of my favorites this year, how, <laughs> the title is a bit of a departure for SAE. How to Manage the Perfect Factory or How AS6500 Can Lead to Everlasting Happiness. Um, you have to kind of understand that David Carr is the chair of the uh, committee that put together AS6500, which is the standard regarding um, manufacturing management and how to essentially put together the perfect factory. So this is an incredibly um, enjoyable book that kind of walks you through the best way to use AS6500 to improve your working environment. You know, it's always different when people from different um, goals and backgrounds come together. So this talks about how engineers work with manufacturers, how they work with upper management, and all at the same time, we come out happy and we look at the bottom line. So, um, you know, this is one of those books that I, I just wasn't sure about, but when I read it, I became a believer. So I am absolutely pushing this book to everybody out there. Um, we'll talk about this maybe a little later, but one thing you should know is AS6500, even though it originated as an aerospace standard, it's actually appropriate for any factory. And that's one thing that also comes across in the book as David wants everybody to understand that, you know, you can apply these standards in whatever factory you are at. Um, next is the second edition. Textbook, Fundamentals of Automobile Body Structure and Design. Um, I'm pleased to say that we have about 20 different universities that use this book and have used the first edition for a number of years. So um, they're all anxious to get the new edition. Uh, things that changed for this edition is, of course, we updated all the illustrations um, because it is a, an automobile design book. So we want the most uh, recent automobile designs out there to be in the book. Um, we also talked more about crash worthiness, accident reconstruction. Um, and now the chapter kind of provides a clear flow of how to design a vehicle step by step um, and how those pieces work together. It is just, I think, a much cleaner process for students to go through than it was before. So I'm looking forward to the feedback on that book. Next is a list of everything coming out the rest of the year. Um, we generally have about two books coming out per month, but instead of coming back every month, I thought I would just save everything up and come back in August and December to bring you guys up to speed. So kind of looking through the list, you see we have um, a couple of uh, tech profiles in aerospace. We have um, advanced hybrid powertrains for commercial vehicles. That is also a second edition. I think what you'll see going forward from SAE books is that we're taking a very careful look at our list and figuring out which books um, are becoming out of date and could benefit from a revision. We don't want to do the revision just for the sake of having a new book. We do it because there's a reason behind it. Um, as someone who comes from a background of textbook publishing, I know what it's like to be required to put out a new book every three years um, when there's no need. It's exhausting and there's no reason for that. So everything we do um, on our list is very carefully curated and selected. And there's a reason behind every new edition that we do. Um, one thing is that I insist that the authors be able to give me, you know, 30 seconds in an elevator pitch about why the new edition is so important to SAE. One book that I do want to point out, two books actually in December, R495, Introduction to Cybersecurity. Um, that is an overall view of 
J3061. I do want to make you aware of that anytime that we have a book that um, accompanies a standard, it does not include the material from the standard. These are meant to be used together as bundles. So, you know, for example, on David Carr's book, I went in and did a search of the actual language from the standard. And I think he used about 50 words in the entire book that came directly from the standard. So that's very important to remember that you can't not get the standard. You have to have both because they work together. The second book I want to point out to you is R506, Fundamentals, Fundamentals of Vehicle Design, second edition. Um, this is a revision of R114 by Tom Gillespie, which came out in 1992. Yep, come up on 30 years and um, is the overall best line book that SAE has ever published. So we are very excited to have Tom on board to do the new edition of that book. Just a few award winners I want to point out to you. Um, in 2020, The Road to the Top was chosen by the Consumer Electronic Show to be highlighted on the main stage. So what does that mean? That means that goes beyond automotives and aerospace and everything that we do. Um, and we're, we're talking about 150 to 175,000 people were at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and our authors had the main stage. Um, there was an incredible reception about, for them by Ford afterwards, and um, it was just an incredible honor. It's the first time SAE has ever had a book um, highlighted at the Consumer Electronics Show by the, the conference itself. Um, and, you know, we, we're hoping for a repeat, so we'll see what happens. The other two books I want to point out are uh, Benjamin Franklin's Silver Award winners for publishing excellence in professional and technical reference books. Um, we won in 2019 and again in 2020. So these judges um, of the Benjamin Franklin Awards, they are publishing professionals. Um, they are instructors. They are engineers. They are people who understand the content that's presented to them. And so we get a detailed report after the awards are over from the judges telling us what worked in the book, what doesn't work in the book. And quite frankly, submitting a book for the Ben Franklin Award is worth it just for the feedback that we get back. Okay, so now time for Q&A. If I was in person, I would be throwing prizes at you, but I can't do that. So Angela, what you got? Sure, yeah, and just as a reminder, anyone else that has some questions for Sherry, I'll monitor the chat window, but I did have some questions for you. Are there any dates available for the book publishing in August? Yes, um, that's actually a great question. The books coming out in August will be out the last week of August. Um, generally, that's our publishing window. Um, sometimes it gets confusing because when books go into our system, they automatically go to Mobilist as newly published, when in fact the publication date could be as much as six to eight weeks off. So with all technology, we are looking at ways to flag that so consumers will know when to expect books. You can always click on the book okay. on that page you showed, and it will tell you the publication date. Okay, perfect. Um, now, I know you highlighted several books throughout your presentation, but are there any books coming up this fall or winter? Maybe list one that you're really excited about? You know, I am so excited about David Carr's book. Um, I really had to be talked into doing this book. Um, I started my career with the For Dummies brand, um, so I wasn't unfamiliar with lighthearted approaches, but it's, it's such a departure from what SAE does. But um, in working with David and actually editing the content with him, it's a it's a phenomenal book. And I really hope that we can get the message out. It's good for all factories and not just aerospace. Now, it's, um, it's interesting you brought that up because I was going to ask about that particular book with David Carr. What makes it important to the aerospace sector? Um, what makes it important is that so many people came together on the committee from all aspects of aerospace. So government, private industry, commercial, um, and really talked about what's important at all aspects of a factory. So looking at a factory from every perspective um, and figuring out how the engineer can, I don't want to say make everyone happy, but can really have some big wins um, for what their agenda is. 
Um, one of the things I think is uh, incredibly funny in his book is David often talks about um, the dark powers. Um, and those are the people that are not engineers. And then the good guy is the one who's actually an engineer. So um, it's just an incredible book. We'll put a sample up when we get that, we get to that point. Okay, great. Um, now, before I move on with my questions, I see a few. Uh, Michael asks, sorry if I missed this, but how do you get access to books and what are your purchase, purchasing options? We have um, so many options. Um, you know, first and foremost, you can always publish or purchase the ebook. That's the quickest way to get access. Um, as an individual, you would go to SAE.org or Mobilis will take you to that link to download the ebook into your SAE.org library. Um, if you were at a corporation and you have a access to a subscription, our ebook collections are available, um, perpetual access on a yearly subscription basis. And they're available in various collections. So if you don't want the entire, you know, library, we also offer custom choices for you to go through. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I did just share out um, a button as well for some of you. If you are interested in some of those collections that Jerry mentioned or some of the purchasing opportunities, I encourage you to contact our sales. Uh, you know, I should also say for people like me who still like print, um, you can purchase the print book at sae.org, and we also offer them through Amazon.com. I'm also I'm big, a big fan of print as well, Sherry. I share that with you. Um, okay, let me take a look here. Are there any topics that you'd like to see more focus on in SAE book? Yeah, I think um, you know we will continue and we'll always do technical books, and I think that's you know obviously it's incredibly important, but I think. As a leader in the industry, we have some room to touch on um, more topics that are inclusive, um, more HR related, more diversity related. So I'm currently working with the Center of um, Diversity and Inclusion in, automobile, in the automobile industry um, on a new series of books that will take a look at um, what HR could do to be more user friendly. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so let me see. Would you have two to three recommendations for those in the audience that might be focused on electrification? I know that's a really big topic right now. Yes. Um, we have a new book by Sam Davis that I just talked about. Um, if Erin were here, she would tell you to pick up her journal on, um, I wrote it down so I wouldn't mess this up, Sustainable Transportation. <laughs> we have, for SAE Books, we have a new book coming out next year by Andy Abel on fuel sales. And then we have a book coming out this year um, on noise, vibration, and harshness of electric vehicles. And I think it's an incredibly important book because we don't think about noise when we think about electric vehicles because they're so quiet. Um, what does that mean? What are the ramifications of having a vehicle so quiet? And uh, this, vehicle, this book gets into that topic at a great level. Okay. Very cool. Um uh, so what if we wanted to learn more about publishing with SAE? Maybe we have a submission or a topic that we'd like to, some of the audience members, not me personally. Come on. Someone else might want to put <laughs> No, I don't read books. <laughs> um, there are multiple ways to get in touch with us. If you go to SAE.org, we have a community um, access where you can fill out a form, tell us what you're interested in writing. And then on September 9th, I think. Eighth or ninth. Nice. Yeah. Um, right. I'm doing two webinars on how to publish with SAE books. So this is really going to take you from what do you do when you have an idea and walk you all the way through the process until, you know, that wonderful book shows up on your desk at the end. Awesome. Yeah. And I just pushed out that action button for everybody. Uh, Sherry mentioned we are hosting a whole seminar on how to publish with SAE. Sherry is going to walk you through that process. And we have two different segments set up just with the time difference for everybody. Take a look at that on the registration page and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, I have actually reached the end of my list of questions. I see some conversation going on here. I'm glad Michael Paris uh, was able to connect in regards to digital access to download of books. Did anybody else have any questions for Sherry in particular before we move forward? Thank you, everybody. I appreciate the time. Thank you, Sherry.